Welcome to The Metabolic Link, a medical and science-focused podcast that explores the common thread of metabolism in health and disease. This is where science meets society. Welcome back to another episode of The Metabolic Link. Today, we're sitting down with Dr. Shivani Sethi to discuss the role of nutrition and mental health, metabolic psychiatry, and the future of the field. Dr. Sethi is a physician who is double board certified in obesity medicine and psychiatry, and whose research focuses on optimizing brain health by integrating low carbohydrate nutrition and the treatment of metabolic dysfunction. This interview was recorded in partnership with the Charlie Foundation at Metabolic Health Summit 2022. Thanks for listening, and we hope that you enjoy. My name is Shabani Sethi. Uh, I am a faculty psychiatrist and obesity medicine physician at Stanford University School of Medicine. Um, I am the founding director of the Stanford Metabolic Psychiatry Clinic, and I do research that involves dietary and pharmacological interventions to improve metabolic dysfunction as well as mental health. So metabolic psychiatry is a term that we developed at Stanford to describe the improvement of metabolic dysfunction to improve mental health. So any kind of metabolic abnormality, whether it's blood glucose or whether it's uh, cholesterol or lipids um, or high inflammation, we treat that, uh, insulin resistance as well. We treat that and obesity as well to improve psychiatric health. And we started a study that uh, is a pilot study looking at the ketogenic diet specifically in those with schizophrenia or bipolar illness and looking at the metabolic markers, outcomes, as well as the psychiatric outcomes. And the trial should be done by the summer, but I presented some data today uh, for our preliminary cohort uh, of both those, those metabolic and psychiatric markers with improvement in these patients. So there is a lot of linkage. And when I was early in my medical training in medical school, I saw that psychiatrists were treating mental health conditions without necessarily focusing on the metabolic piece or metabolic evaluation. But in fact, a lot of psychiatric illness has a lot of overlap with metabolic issues. And so we tend to silo ourselves a little bit. Um, we're guilty of that in, in medicine, in subspecialties and further subspecialty that there isn't a lot of crosstalk. I also noticed in primary care that when uh, patients were being treated for a cardiovascular issue or a me metabolic issue, that psychiatric conditions weren't necessarily uh, being addressed as well um, or considered as part of the connection to actually contribute to worsening the metabolic dysfunction itself. So early on, I noticed that theme, and I felt that there was a connection here and there was an unmet need, which is why I went into psychiatry training with this uh, idea of addressing this unmet need and termed the connection metabolic psychiatry at Stanford and started this clinic um, so that I could work with this population that I really enjoy working with. So I've been practicing uh, the ketogenic diet with patients for, for 15 years now. Um, so very early on in my medical training, I was introduced to the ketogenic diet and learned from Eric Westman. And then I became more interested and started learning from others and had more mentors and uh, kind of created my own pathway within residency uh, for getting additional training in obesity medicine and eating disorders and additional certification. And for me, that was really important to have in order to uh, be able to fully address the issues uh, that come as comorbidities with mental illness. Uh, so that's, that's how I started. So I primarily focus on clinical outcomes and patient care, and I am looking at uh, peripheral blood biomarkers, looking at insulin resistance, looking at advanced lipid panels, for example, uh, looking at the standard gold standard of how we measure psychiatric outcomes today. And in the future, we're, there are a couple other trials that we're, that we're planning out that we'll be looking at like fMRI imaging to look at uh, neuronal functional, functional neuroconnectivity. Um, and that's, that's another avenue to look at 
mechanistically. But there's been a lot of great researchers, you know, before me who have spent decades of their life looking at insulin resistance and how that affects depression or looking at um, mechanistically mitochondrial dysfunction so that energy, sort of that we think of an energy powerhouse creating the ATP. We actually have uh, kind of looked at uh, ketogenic diets and how they can increase energy production, they can decrease inflammation, and they can also improve the plasticity in the brain, so actually increasing the neuronal growth or connections, um, which is really amazing that a dietary intervention can do that um, and improve metabolic health at the same time and brain health. So let's take the example of insulin resistance that I was mentioning before. Um, a colleague in my department did a study looking at uh, the level of insulin resistance actually correlates with the severity of the depression. So if you have more insulin resistance, you have more depression severity, and that's a really big correlation. Um, it is, therefore, what you eat, for example, um, how many carbohydrates you have, how much sugar intake, whether the, you know, how highly processed the food is, it's gonna spike your insulin level, your glucose level, based on what you eat, even in the timing of the day, for example, if you're not having enough protein and fat and you just have carbohydrates and sugar, you know, first thing in the morning, for example, and you have a higher um, glucose level, that's going to actually affect your hormones. That's gonna affect even your dopamine reward pathway. It's gonna prime it, just like drugs of addiction do. Um, with a rapid change in, in, in glucose and insulin. So it's that idea of what I put in my body actually matters for all these complicated mechanisms that are occurring and our brain and our body are connected. So what's happening in the body, what's happening in the blood, it's gonna affect the brain. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like a Berlin wall where you can't, you know, get through. Um, there is a blood brain barrier that we've learned in training, but there is, uh, you know, it, it, it is somewhat permeable, like things do exchange and transfer. That connection between metabolic health and mental health um, is understood by the public. And my hope is that we can scale this kind of care um, that's so helpful for so many people and that people can have access to that. So that would be my hope and vision for it. So I developed this term, metabolic psychiatry, to describe that uh, connection between metabolism and mental health. And I never would have imagined how it's skyrocketed and that so many people uh, really resonate with that term. And my vision is shared by many people, which makes me so excited about the future and what the future holds. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Metabolic Link. If you're enjoying this podcast, Please share, subscribe, follow, and leave us a comment or review on whichever platform you use to tune in. We hope you'll join us next time.